doing? <laughs> 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 Colin, mate, I've had enough of this. It's getting out of control. There's one thing painting the town red, and then there's this. Guys, it is your boy Niran here, and you are watching FTW. It's of course the series where I bring to you the best and more frequently the worst of what football has to offer during the last seven days. What's been kicking off in the world this week? A lot, a lot of things have happened. But outside of football, and the internet's been going wild at the new Spider-Man trailer. It's yet another dramatic Marvel film, and if you like more explosions than a Liverpoolian taxi ride, then you are in luck. That's a point, actually. Where's my man's hero film? because he needs one. Anyway, the trailer's out and lots of people seem to be confused at the air getting in a right hook here. But if you look closer, you'll actually understand what's gone on. And I'm looking forward to watching it even more after seeing this deleted scene. <laughs> to the football now. Oh god, the football. Let's get straight into the crazy stuff as over in France, journalist Roman Molina spoke out on Twitter with a flurry of incredible leaks on the world of football. Ah oh, shit. Here we go again. Like, this stuff is nuts. He spoke live on the platform with files on story after story involving corruption, grooming, and racism across Europe and Africa. It includes some pretty astronomical allegations, some of which I can't really include right now. But this guy is gonna need MI5, FBI, Secret Service, codename Kids Next Door level of security. I don't even think Batman can protect him from the football associations now. Anyway, on to Benjamin May Mendy now. I'm know that because that's why I hired you. The problem with all of this for me is it was all in French. I'm out here pretending to know the language and not knowing what's kicking off. Well, uh, you know, uh, wee oui, wee, oui, bon bon. Goodness, this is extraordinary. But a few things that can be covered include the apparent revelation that the Miralem Pjanic Arthur swap deal between Juve and Barcelona was in fact illegal. I could have told you that straight off the bat. This is the worst trade deal of all time. Allegedly, Al Qaeda are hiring people people through the medium of football. Now, tell us why you're interested in the role today. Well, first of all, I've got pretty explosive acceleration. You're in. French manager Didier Deschamps is alleged to have injured one of his own players on purpose. Look, listen, it was bad, I know, but he, he leaked a sex tape. You don't have to double put it. And apparently a current French international hosted a party where he had a shit in people's Nah, what in the world? Bang, see you later, you're going prison. You go in prison. George. And you're getting you're getting named and shamed. I'm sorry to France, but you've outstayed your welcome here. Who's doing this at a party? Just bring out the cards or something, bro. Imagine Kylian Mbappe seeing this Don take his trousers down instead of going and getting the tequila from across the room. What is he doing? Please stop. Please stop. Why is he still going? We're going to see how all of this develops because apparently there's much more to come. I don't know if I can take that personally. On to the Champions League and on the pitch, French side PSG were the victims of a City comeback as they went from 1-0 up to 2-1 down against the reigning at Premier League champions. This in a game with more financial backing than the Qatar World Cup bid. It's fair to say Messi realised that he chose the wrong oil merchants. So we don't have the capacity. <laughs> that whole front three, their highlights for this season are a bit of a shambles, especially given what was expected of them. Maybe Neymar was distracted by this vicious chanting in the Man City crowd. The one man who did perform well in this one, Manchester City's Bernardo Silva. Always seems to turn up in games against big sides. And there was also this wholesome moment at the end of the game when this fan had run on at full time. Knowing the current state of football, the police have probably got this kid in the back of a van by now. At Stamford Bridge and Chelsea dismantled Juventus, winning 4-0 to take control of Group H. This was an absolute slapping. They turned Juve into Piemonte Calcio. They even brought on Saul as a sub 
That's how in control they were. No goals conceded again for Chelsea. They would keep a clean sheet in a brothel that has Jack Grealish in it. Apparently, the current Manchester City star is seeing three women at the same time right now, including Amber, former winner of Love Island, and the in-betweeners, Emily Attack. I think that's a bit dodgy, mate. This man is in a whole next predicament. Imagine he's with one of them when another comes home. He's got to get out of there quickly. <laughs> before realising that he's Jack Grealish. That's it. We need him on Love Island right now. Jack, I'm afraid to say you've been eliminated. I don't know what that means. Chelsea right back Reese James turned into prime Cafu in this one. Him versus Trent is going to be the new Lampard versus Gerrard, isn't it? Himself and Shalab are getting on the score sheet in this one. Chelsea's defenders are getting all their goals. It's wild. The formation is upside down. Paul Lukaku's got the shock of his life when he comes back. And he's got his back to the opposition's goal 80 yards out. And Manchester United and another a set of late Champions League goals gave Michael Carrick a winning start as caretaker manager, with his side beating Villarreal 2-0. I made a separate video on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's sacking here, but this of course comes off the back of Ole's final game in charge in a 4-1 loss to Watford. And United's form recently is clearly having an effect on Mason Greenwood, given he liked this Instagram post. The highlight of pain for United fans in this one was a mistake and then red card for Harry Maguire. I wouldn't even let him under boss after the match. And it was a goal for Donny van der Beek. Long time no see. I can't believe it. Someone said it was dead. I'll tell you what, that wasn't the only miracle that we witnessed in this game. Step forward, Emmanuel Dennis. <laughs> But as I mentioned, Michael Carrick was in the hot seat for this first game. The officials suffered a bit of a communications issue when this got underway and couldn't hear each other. I reckon Harry Maguire just stole the double-A batteries from the radio. If they can't speak to each other, you can't get sent off. But I say, give the job to Carrick. Jamie Carragher's tweet famously quoting Rio Ferdinand shows that he agrees with what I'm saying here. I mean, look, hear what I'm saying, yeah? He's his own assistant manager. Do you understand what level of skill that takes? It's time for his story arc which will end in a farewell interview in 2025 after a Carabao Cup loss to Forest Green. United have been linked with pretty much every manager under the sun this week, and the players will be wanting to impress whoever comes in. You'll have Luke Shaw convincing Zinedine Zidane he's actually a competent left-back. <laughs> Or it could be Maurizio Pochettino. And I feel for him when he first walks in and spots Phil Jones. What the fucking hell's happening? Either way, it was a bad day for Villarreal, but they probably deserved it for whatever this is. Back to the wonderful world of Twitter, where a man called Jacob has taken the place by storm. Uniting the UK together with a Twitter space where random people sing in front of about 50,000 others as an online karaoke. There were star-studded appearances from the likes of Bazinga, Lethal Bizzle, Chunks, and West Ham midfielder Declan Rice. Rice, Rice, baby. All right, stop. Collaborate and listen. Rice is back with a brand new invention. Something grabs a hold of me tightly. Flow like a hop on daily and nightly. West Ham's admin seemed to love it. And there was an unreal array of people listening in. For example, half of the Premier League clubs. Even Nigel Farage wanted in at one stage. <laughs> I watched Shrewsbury Town sing ABBA in front of Lad Bible, Burger King, and Anthony Fantano. Because maybe... I am legit feeling a strong 9 to a 10. All I'm saying is I can't wait for Romelu Lukaku to make it in. This shit is wicked on these mean streets. None of my friends speak. We all trying to win. Gilfy Sigurdsson tried to request a song, but the police weren't having it. And there was even a point where Arsenal goalkeeper Aaron Ramsdale was listening along. That's until someone started singing, you'll never walk alone. He's probably still traumatized after Mikel Arteta's Arsenal side were brought back down to earth in the form of a 4-0 defeat to Liverpool. Arteta spends one one week coaching Vic Star 1, 2, 3 and it all falls apart. <laughs> but the fieriest part of this one definitely had to be the standoff between both of the managers. You're mad, you know, there's more tactical awareness in Pep's fleece than in you. Your eyes stopped installing at 50%, you blind dickhead. It all kicked off here. I can't lie. Arteta rose up from the bench and you could tell
Kelly wanted a scrap. Let's fucking have it. Imagine how aggressive his singing dialect would be. In got, got put in a spliff. GB got put in a spliff. It's okay, Mikel. Look, you lost 4-0. But at least you've finally taken a shot at Klopp trophy away from Frank Lampard. Elsewhere in Gabriel versus Mane was a key battle because there's not one hairline between them. Meanwhile, Liverpool, look, we're just the best team in the world. You know what I'm saying? Like, quite evidently, we're sick. No, I don't fade me out, innit? You'll never... Leeds versus Tottenham offered up some quality content, but no points for Bielsa's men after a Spurs comeback. Calvin Phillips was taking no orders from the referee, but in the early hours of the night, a couple days later, apparently picked up a head injury whilst out clubbing during Leeds' Christmas party. Seems as if the referee got his revenge after all. What in the world? He looks as if he's about to drop 12 dead trap tunes recorded off his old Blackberry. At least he's already got his first bit of beef. He was giving it to Reguillon on Instagram before the Spanish left back violated him with this post on his next story. Elsewhere in Antonio Conte's fed up of his new players already. Yeah, we really are. And Meanwhile, Manchester City's Zhao Cancelo may have produced one of the filthiest assists of all time. A bit physically sick, to be honest. A Barcelona and defender Ronald Araujo scored what he thought would be a goal to give his side the lead. Not only was it disallowed, he managed to injure himself in the celebrations. And over at Napoli, manager Luciano Spalletti refused to shake his opposite number's hand. At least the Spartak Moscow boss didn't seem to care. And you thought you'd seen enough of France in it. Well, think again. <laughs> Leon and Marseille's league on clash was postponed this week after a Leon fan threw a full bottle at Marseille's Dimitri Paye. It's yet more fan trouble in France after incidents involving Marseille and Nice, as well as Lons and Lille a couple of months ago. Though, thinking about it, this is probably the least of French football's concerns this week. Paye was okay, but seemed a little bit concussed, had to have an ice pack on his head and was treated at the time. The leader of the Leon fans group actually found the guy who threw it and gave him a piece of his mind. Significativement le baromètre des sanctions. Poor Dimitri, man. It's always him. The guy could be walking down a Sainsbury's aisle and he'll get assaulted by a loaf of war button. But at least it wasn't all negative in the crowd for this clash. <laughs> Elsewhere in France domestically, and Lionel Messi finally scored his first goal in Ligue 1 for PSG. And it only took him till his Taurus Rising debut. Kaylor Navas' wife is quoted as saying that she loves goalkeepers this week, guessing that's her specific type. Now, this picture makes a lot more sense. And in the lower leagues of France, in the seventh division to be exact, the goalkeeper for Saint Brevin Le Pin, I've probably butchered that, was sent off for urinating in his own goal. Honestly, no, look, France, I'm telling Telling you, you man, you got go. In Italy, and Ghanaian youngster Felix Afenagian burst onto the scene with a brace for Roma. The second of the goals was absolutely brilliant, and his manager Jose Mourinho promised to give him a new pair of 800 euro shoes. His reaction was extremely wholesome. <laughs> No, look, look at this. The new is new model. Hey! They are different. Lazio striker Chiro Immobile seems to have taken up a new career. Meanwhile, Matteo Darbian is just violating vertically challenged Lorenzo Insigne here. <laughs> In Germany and Hertha fans were not happy after their Berlin derby defeat against Union when Davy Selke tried to throw his shirt into the crowd. A selection of the fans unhappy with the performance threw it back in. But in Russia and these kids all wanted a shirt that had been thrown into the crowd and they were prepared to settle it like men. <laughs> And in Spain, there was some pretty saddening news revolving around Sergio Aguero, who's been forced to retire from football. This after going off feeling chest pains and being diagnosed with a heart problem a couple of weeks ago. And it's heartbreaking stuff for him after his, of course, very recent, really, move to Barcelona. One of the best strikers, really, of the current generation. I don't really know the details about the condition, but with the amount of players that have been suffering from this and passing out in games recently, it does raise a pretty legitimate question about players being overworked physically. Hello all and welcome to the beautiful game, the segment where we take a look at the poetic and brilliant side of the game that we love. We are back by popular demand for yet more glorious beauty. <laughs> <laughs> 
And that concludes the beautiful game. Closer to home and match of the day was about three business weeks long, but the best goal of the week was scored at hashtag United's 24 hour match, where creators played for an entire day to raise money for Movember, and Ellis or Away Days did this. Big throw. Oh my oh, god, Platten! Oh it's my sensational god. Ellis. from Platten! He has to it! We've got interesting goalkeeper positioning going on for Arsenal's women's side. This just looked like me in goal on pro clubs. At Morecambe, we've got this 94th minute winner from Cole Stockton. Absolute limbs in all the ends. Meanwhile, League Two side Cruz man of the match from this weekend was Zach Williams, who's only 17 years of age. Now, he's not legally old enough to drink. So his man of the match award instead was a pack of crisps and some Jaffa cakes. In Turkey and Galatasaray fans brought a Squid Game TIFO to their most recent game against Fenerbahce. They lost, however, and Fenerbahce tweeted, player 1905 eliminated. Just give him a shithousery award. In the Brazilian third division now, <laughs> Could have done a little bit better there. And that's being replicated over on the amateur scene elsewhere in South America. <laughs> Gee, who have you even seen here? There's a woman three villages over that's getting struck by that ball. Over in America, right after his teammate scored, this Duke Blue Devils footballer decided to taunt the goalkeeper by suggesting how he should dive next time. He got what was coming to him. Meanwhile, there's more aggression over in Scotland. That's not really a sentence that should be surprising. When Aberdeen's Funzo Ojo got into a scuffle with a Dundee United fan, Hibs ruined the Rangers party with their new manager Giovanni Van Bronckhorst by beating them on the weekend. This interview was golden. How big a performance was that from every department on the pitch today? Do we look happy? <laughs> In Brazil, and a set of fans managed to break into the top of an emergency hatch on a bus to try and see their Flamengo heroes in the flesh. In Paraguay and picture the scene, you're a goal up late in the game. Not only can you time waste by faking an injury, you can get the medical staff to time waste as well. In Russia and Quincy Promes has been charged with attempted murder. How bad was the tackle for crying out loud? And in the Argentinian second division, I think this is a playoff to get promoted from the second division to the first. The two sets of players came out to the Avengers music. This is the lower leagues of Argentina, lads. Iron Man is not in attendance. Unions kap av Els på plan. För Norrköpings del. Hold up. Wait a minute. Now that it is time for Still at Nil Nil, and you guys know the score by now. This is a segment of the show where it brings you the best of Sunday League and amateur football. It's been a little while since we saw the fiery side of Sunday League. I think it's about time we changed that. Did you notice at the end of the clip, he just gave the ball straight back to the defender? It's because he wants to double for him as well. On to the weird stuff though now. 2015, 2017, 2019, último título, ele venceu o Ceará, bateu o Vozão na final. É o maior campeão aí da história da competição. Over in Norway, and a man has been arrested for peeing on a football photographer during a game between Brann and Sandefjord. I don't know how he's made it from France to Norway that quickly, but we move. There's the story of a man who accidentally signed a man he goes to school with on Football Manager. Owen here decided that he needed a new non-league striker. I look no further than current Everton youngster Katia Kuyate. Later on in the week, he goes into Subway and spots a familiar face. It's it's Katia Kuyate. He literally goes to college with the guy. He wanted an answer as to where he should actually play him, and judging from his reply, he wants to be an out and out striker. In the depths of French football, the 10th division to be precise, and former Everton defender Tony Hibbert has come out of retirement to play for ES Luzi. We've got the story of Waterford's manager over in Ireland by the name of Mark Bircham. He found out he'd been let go and sacked by the club via Twitter this week. And finally, we'll end on some pretty important stories. First of all, I want to extend my well wishes over
over to John Fleck, who collapsed during a game playing for Sheffield United against Reading. It seems like he had some kind of seizure, but he was treated at the time and was seen standing up leaving the pitch. He's been discharged from hospital now and seems okay, but regardless, hope you get well soon, John. And there's the extremely heartwarming story over at Stockport, where Connor Jennings, who's been out for some time and was told he may never be able to play football again after having and then hence recovering from cancer last year. Well, 10 months after being diagnosed, he returned to the pitch and 10 minutes after coming on, he scored. We absolutely love to see it. Connor, mate, you're an inspiration. Keep doing your thing. That, though, is going to wrap up football this week and I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then feel free to slap a like on the video and, of course, subscribe if you're new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media. It is at the official FNG on Twitter and on Insta. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy yourselves and goodbye.